Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Hello, Melissa. Good evening. Good evening, indeed. And what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening to think about those who have given so much that we can enjoy the life that we enjoy here in the United States of America. It's like that, huh? It's like that. Um, And like this and like that. Well, when you kept repeating the word wonderful, I was like, it's not, it's a wonderful life because it's (laughs) not Christmas. That would be... A crazy twist. Right. Surprise. Wrong holiday. <laughs> um, also, I've never seen that movie in its entirety. Like, sat what? down, watched the whole thing front to end. Ooh. Never seen it like that. Wow. Okay. That's a goal for Hashtag this Hashtag revelation. Yeah. 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 Totally. Okay. But for the movie tonight, mm-hmm. um, I have no idea no. what your clue means. Okay. Uh, is there a movie called Memorial Day? <laughs> Actually, there is. <laughs> there is totally a movie. Is that called what Memorial we're watching? Uh, we are not watching that. No, we are watching a movie that is more formative in the minds of generations of, uh, frankly, for young men for the past seventy years. Yeah, what? I mean, does that help? No. Well, he's a real... myself not being a young man um, right, right. does not quite help me. That's fair. Well, I mean, I'm more referencing the fact that, I mean, women couldn't serve in the military until the 90s, I think. So there's generation, you know, there was many, many years. Anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, he's a real American hero, this one. American hero is the name of the film. No. <laughs> Sorry, that's a, you definitely didn't watch this when you were a kid. I've, yeah. Most people who hear a real American hero. G.I. Joe? Yes. <laughs> There you go. Wow. There's a G.I. Joe movie? We're watching G.I. Joe, the movie. (laughs) Colon, the movie. (laughs) Have you ever seen this film? Nope, I have not. Mm -mm. Do you know anything about G.I. Joe? Kind of. I think we had a couple figures when I was a kid. Okay. And they're like just army guys, right? That are movable and bendable. There's at least two or three girls. Don't worry. Okay, right. Like out of the hundreds of characters, there's like two or three girls. I, my mind is flashing to Saturday morning cartoons. Yes. And um, the commercials advertising like the tank set or yes, something yes. and like kids playing with it. I don't know. I literally, as you're saying that, they're cycling through my mind. Right. Seeing those on during the cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'd have the Transformer ones too, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, yes. So do you know any of the characters in G.I. Joe? Is there one named Joe? <laughs> That's a good guess. I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about G.I. Joe. Do you know what the bad guys are called? No. No? Skeletor is He-Man. <laughs> um, I really want G.I. Joe to fight Skeletor. <laughs> that would be amazing. I want to hear Skeletor's voice right now. <laughs> yes, that's it. Um, Russians? Russians. That's a good guess. Okay. That's a solid guess. It's not correct, but it's a solid guess. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I know my 80s politics, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, G.I. Joe is much older than the 80s. Oh. Yes. Oh. That's why I was referencing generations of, of young boys. Yeah. Wow. Huh? Big blank here. All right. So you have no idea what the plot of this is. You have no idea who the characters are. Nope. And nope. What are you... What? <laughs> what are you thinking going into this one? I'm thinking, okay, well, this explains why the kids are watching with us tonight. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, like, the Lego movie was awesome. That was a movie based on a toy. True. And I've really enjoyed those. So it's possible this could be enjoyable. And what do you... <laughs> it's po- really, <laughs> You're really loading yourself <laughs> for success this time, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Um, what are you dreading about this film, if anything? Um, kids movies can be mm, not mm. fun to watch as well. Yeah. You have to be in the right frame of mind. Agree. And 
they can just be done poorly. True. Um, so I guess I'm just, I'm hoping that it's one of the good ones, I guess. Fair. This is a risky one for me too. I'm, I'm yeah. a little, tra- it's, I'm, I'm nervous. Is it up there with the secret of the ooze? <laughs> I mean, probably actually. So wow. I'm, I'm probably setting myself up for heartbreak with this one, but I just had to, you know, I had to, I had to try it out. When you were a kid, did you like GI Joe or did you like the bad guy? Uh, I liked GI Joe. Yeah. Okay. I like GI Joe. Who's okay. the bad guy? You're. I think you're gonna find out, and it's it's pretty crazy. Um, it's pretty crazy. This movie too. You don't. The only part I don't like is you don't have the context to know how crazy this movie is because I don't think you watched the show any or anything. So, no. any, anyway, okay. I don't want to. I've already said too much. Give me a movie poster and a tagline, and then we can go check it out. I just. I don't feel informed at all. Okay. Um. I don't think you've said too much at all. All right. Um. Okay. Is it like a? It can't just be a movie about war for kids. That doesn't make sense. War for kids. <laughs> you know what, what I mean. What is that movie about? <laughs> well, like it's, it's a. I don't know. They're soldiers. Okay. What? What kind of movie about soldiers do you make for children? I'm. I don't know. I don't think you're remembering what the 80s were like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing like, oh gosh, Rambo, <laughs> but for children, okay. <laughs> like a toy. I'm picturing a toy like walking along a toy? in the opening se- sequence of Rambo. Okay. Um, okay. Anyway, so you need Just a movie walking poster? Down the ro- I need a movie poster, yeah. Uh, hmm, that's That's good. Oh, a toy walking down the road. I think that's your movie poster. Is that what you said? <laughs> sure. We'll just okay. kind of make it like a Rambo. Rambo? Spoof. All right. And uh, I already gave you, I mean, the saying for G.I. Joe, so probably that'd be your safe type Okay. Ride. An all-American hero? Real American hero. A real American hero. G.I. Joe is there. Yeah. Can he also be eating a hero sandwich? <laughs> sure. I mean, it's your movie poster. You can make it whatever you want. <laughs> yep. What, what does Joe do look like in your mind, by the way? Um, I I can picture the G.I. Joe logo. Okay. It's like red, white, and blue, I think. Sometimes. He's kind of like that. He's red, white, and blue? <laughs> <laughs> He's in fatigues. He's in fatigues or yeah. he is fatigued? <laughs> He's in fatigues. Well, if he's eating a hero... He could be fatigued <laughs> and just too caloric, you know. He's like loaded down. Right. Oh, too many carbs. I can't Wolf. wait to see uh, the hero laden GI Joes as they battle the mysterious villains that you will soon be introduced to. Let's let's go watch this. Let's go check it out. Okay. America's number one superhero team explodes in the home video screen in their very first major motion picture blockbuster, GI Joe the movie. Masterpiece and mind blowing animation techniques that make this feature unlike any G.I. Joe you've ever seen. You have nothing to fear but Falcon himself. Miami Vice Super Cop Don Johnson stars as the voice of Lieutenant Falcon, the playboy whose shenanigans land him in the slaughterhouse. I've been expecting you. Ruled by who else but that patriotic pain, the incredibly awesome Sergeant Slaughter. You're going to war till you wish you're dead. Then it's off to Cobra Land where the terrifying Galobolus, brilliantly voiced by Burgess Meredith, reveals his plan to destroy the minds of every human on Earth. This visible planet will be ours. <laughs> now, right in their own homes, kids everywhere can see if G.I. Joe can still... And this is for the U.S. Army! Fasten your seatbelt for the supercharged motion picture debut of G.I. Joe the movie. Podcast. La 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 la. <laughs> Go, Joe. <laughs> oh. Are you ready to finish with the summary? Give me the summary of this film. This I command. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know this was the superhero sensation of 1987 coming directly <laughs> to VHS? To your home, to your children's home television. <laughs> now I know. Uh. And knowing... Is half, half the, the battle. G.I. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Wow. Wow. I actually really enjoyed that. Did you? Yeah, I did. No, for real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I was worried going into it uh, because of TMNT 2. I had such an attachment to this one. I remember being like 
mind-blowing revelation after revelation as a child. <laughs> and then the danger, the real sense of danger that happens to some of the characters. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it left a deep impression on me. And it all held up. This movie was, I, I had chills the first five-minute intro to this movie. <laughs> Just, it was like definitely like tapping into my, uh, you know, pre-10. Like, I was like, I don't know, seven or eight when I saw this. So it was very... I'm not disappointed at all in this one. Yay. That's good. Uh, What did you like about it? Um, Well, I love the style of animation. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the opening sequence was really cool. It's like this whole attack that happens on the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And um, it's dynamic. And there was so much I forgot about G.I. Joe that was like Mm. hidden in latent memories from watching Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Not that I watched the cartoons, but what I knew from the commercials Mm -hmm. and the public service announcements. Oh, of course. Um, So I had forgotten, obviously, in the intro, like there was so much I didn't really realize about G.I. Joe. I forgot about like the... Obviously. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) The characters are so weird. They have themes. Zany? They're very themed, yes. You could definitely tell a uh, toy company came up with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're like it's like a spice cabinet. And every <laughs> what? And every G.I. Joe is like a, a different spice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like totally contained in their own little spice world. Wow. Um, and then Cobra being the enemy, I've totally forgot about that, but I knew that. Sorry, now I'm thinking of Spice World because you said they were contained in their own <laughs> Spice World. And anyway, so Cobra. Cobra's the enemy. Yes, they are. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. Wow. Keep going. Keep going. I don't want to derail you. Well, okay. What else did I like about the movie? Um, the Okay, so the creativity of Cobra La. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> You just said the creativity of the most uncreative name for like an origin <laughs> location. Do you know why they named it that? Because of Shangri-La? Um, well, no, they were, they didn't, they were, it was like a placeholder. Okay. The writers were like, well, we'll come up with something better later, but we'll just call it Cobra Law for now. And they never And did. Hasbro loved it. <laughs> and so they had to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but Whoa. okay cobra Law had all these like cool like plant like organic yes, things yes. and like um yeah. tentacles and like weird i don't know like weird flying it was, everything pods. was organic technology yeah yeah it uh-huh. was super cool yeah. i loved that yeah. yeah yeah and it reminded me oddly of eon flux totally a I little bit that. yeah that. um our kids actually really like this too Mm-hmm. And I asked them why, and they just said, what did they say? It was silly. It just seemed silly. <laughs> and I, I can't really argue. It is a little silly. It is, but at the same time, mm-hmm. some of the sequences and the themes and what was happening mm-hmm. were so adult that I, oh, yeah. I, at one point, I was like thinking, like, if this were happening in a, in a, in a, in a, in a movie with actors. Live action, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be bawling my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> was once a man cobra commander once a man cobra oh. commander deserved the oscar for this year it's heartbreaking <laughs> the only words he can say oh. as he's turning and like he's reducing back into his base form which is a snake i i like i get that he was saying was once a man but they had this whole huge exposition about how they're not men they're like a different <laughs> evolutionary branch and they think men are you know apes and and lower evolved and everything so like he's saying was once a man but he wasn't a man he was a sh- sh- cobra la or shank yes he was a cobra la ian <laughs> well okay i think that's where you have to like really like yeah. just hang up True. I don't know. Whatever that is. This is a pretty <laughs> serious movie, though. I mean, there's a lot you have to take very seriously, like <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> Wait, which one is he? Sergeant Slaughter? You don't remember Sergeant Slaughter? Is he the one with like... He's a guy who talks like this. And he's, he's got the big glasses on. Drill Sergeant yes. kind of guy. Okay, yes. yeah. Do you know who that is, by the way? Like Sergeant Slaughter. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> do you know why? Uh, do you think he's a real person? Or do you think he's just a character? Isn't he? Is he based on a real guy? 
Like someone who acted like that, like a wrestler. Yes. 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 I got it. You did. Oh my gosh. You okay. He's yes. a wrestler in the yeah. WWF. That makes no difference to me, but I'm glad you uh, got there. They had to, there was a lawsuit, WWF all growing up, Hulkamania, Andre the Giant, all that was, uh, that was the name of it. And then they had to change it because World Wildlife Foundation sued them. <gasps> oh. And so, if I recall correctly, and so they had to change it to something else. So they called, change it to the WWE. <laughs> so nowadays it's the WWE, but it'll always be the WWF in my heart. I in see. My 80s heart. Um, his character had one of the funniest lines. <laughs> it's in the preview. Uh-huh. He's like, he's beating up some Cobra guy. Nemesis Enforcer. He's beating up Nemesis Enforcer, okay. which that name is so intense. <laughs> he's not only of the bad guy, he's your nemesis, but he's the enforcer. Like, you have no questions about his role in the u- in the universe, in the world, for what he's going to bring to the table and what he's going to do to you. So there's, you, it's just very clear. Okay, so you're saying it was an epic fight. Yes. Sergeant okay. Slaughter taken on this guy who they, they use so much of the movie to establish how powerful Nemesis Enforcer is. True. He has blades that can grow out of his elbows. He can like rip titanium. He picks up tanks like one handed and throws them across like hundreds of yards. And he he's like laser proof. All these things, right? Mm-hmm. And then what you're about to say happens. <laughs> and then... Wait, who's the Sergeant w- Slaughter? Sergeant Slaughter is like beating him up. Yes, and he kind of like does like the two handed pa- two handed pound on his chest. And yes. He says, "This is for the U.S. of A." Yes, <laughs> he's just listing people, and I think before he did that was the culmination. Right. I think he'd like first it was for Duke because Duke got hurt, and then it was for all these other. Th- he lists like four things, and of course he ends with the USA. So. We normally we would do a summary. Oh yeah, what's the summary? But of this there's one? like this is a <laughs> no. I really want to hear you summarize this film, please. I don't know if it's possible. So that's the only thing is like the the plot and everything just mm. kind of goes. It's like a I don't know a railway like winding through the mountains or something. It's okay. It's it's kind of wonky, but um. Can I go for it this time? Yes, please. All take right. This. There's an international terrorist organization called Cobra. They're epidemically, like, they systematically always fail. They fight these good guys, which is a, I love the way they call it, a G.I. Joe action force, which is just hilarious to me. It's a super top tier, like, the na- like higher than the Navy SEALs, like, uh, spice rack, apparently, people who are specialized. <laughs> They're so specialized that they have to use only the thing they can do. Like, one guy has a flamethrower, another guy does, like, kung fu. Sure, yeah. Anyway. Like when you're watching the cartoon as a kid, you're like, why does Cobra always fail? And this movie gets into the depths of that. It shows their epic failures. It shows how like they just perpetually keep failing because of Cobra Commander. He's the once a man guy. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was supposed to be this uh, emissary to go out into the world to reclaim it for Cobra La, (laughs) which is this secret society. Don't even get me started on Cobra La because... They have an exposition thing where they talk about the history of it and how man evolved and all this, but then man took over them. And they're supposed to have been advanced for a long time, but man overtook them. It was very confusing. Okay. I think you can kind of just... Oh, sorry. Like, just summary. Summary. You're right. That's the word we're going for. You caught me monologuing. (laughs) So there's bad guys. Okay. There's good guys. The good guys get taken to the bad guy's place. Some of them escape. Some of them don't. The bad guys have them. The bad guys want to kill everybody. The good guys have to go back. All the good guys get captured. Then there's a small group of untrained good guys who are like, we got to be the ones to save everybody. (laughs) And the untrained guys go in, defeat everybody, free the other good guys, and then save everything. And Sergeant Slaughter beats the unbeatable guy. That is so much better than I could have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I try. Wow, you really got the nuance of the movie there. <laughs> the most, uh, thank you. The most unrealistic part of this film, in my opinion, uh, is Don Johnson. He uh, is epically, historically known for having a permanent five o'clock shadow from his Miami Vice days, <laughs> and he plays a completely clean cut character. Hmm. There's not a hint of stubble on his cheeks for Lieutenant Hawk. So uh, that was hard for me to suspend disbelief on. That was a really hard one for me. <laughs> 
uh, there's a sequence with Hawk that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, he like takes a girl into the. Um, <laughs> he's yes. trying to impress this girl, and he takes her into the the compound, like this, the yeah. base, their base, yes, a headquarters. They captured the big bad guy, and he was in like this high security facility. Yeah. 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 And then they're like, what are you doing with a, a woman here? Get her out of here and like mm-hmm. whatever. And so she goes and um, someone comes up to him and they're like, you could have like risked everything just to impress this girl. And then this is so sophisticated, this like sequence they do. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. He he says, oh, if someone wants to get in here, they'd have to do this. And he starts describing what they'd have to do to break in. And as he's describing it, they're doing it. And yeah. you're seeing like it's going between him describing how they'd have to do it and then them actually doing it. And it catches everyone by surprise. And it's so good. It's, it's really such good. a good sequence. I yeah. loved it. It's kind of make you want to watch G.I. Joe the cartoon. Ooh. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is the movie was well put together. The mm-hmm. animation was great. Um, It makes me feel totally validated in liking them when I was a kid. Nice. Because, you know, a lot of times you see stuff when you're little and you're like, did I remember that better than it was? Not really. Like, all of it holds up incredibly well. And the complexity of what you just talked about, too, like the pacing of that and the Mm -hmm. way that they interwove the scene, it was really cool. It was was very, very nicely done. It was. They did a lot of that. A lot of cheeky like complex things like that that was really cool yeah i also think it was hilarious that they have a playboy womanizer in in gi joe this movie like geared towards little kids <laughs> true uh, well they had to do that because the woman was actually the like, baroness yeah or, pythona yeah. uh no i think that one this one was the baroness oh well, maybe it was pythona. she was she was a cobra yeah yeah mm-hmm. and she was like undercover and like trying to she was yeah yeah um, who is your favorite G.I. Joe character? Oh, my Which goodness. is your favorite spice, um, since I'm going with that? My favorite spice. <laughs> uh, wow. I still can't believe this is the uh, second time that we have had the, <laughs> we couldn't remember his name last time, Um, the guy from Lost. Francois. A, yes. He is in this movie as well. He's the Shredder from TMNT 2. My mind is being blown right now. <laughs> He was actually a large part of your childhood and you had no idea. I had no idea. When I was watching Lost, it, I mean, that whole show was about kind of like inception moments and everything. Mm-hmm. And he, he was the biggest inception of them all. He was <laughs> he was playing in the background of my mind the entire time I was watching it. Mm-hmm. So deep levels. My favorite G.I. Joe, though, um, I really like the guys who I like the bad guys. Like Destro, he's got like a silver head for some reason. I don't remember why. <laughs> he's got this really cool voice. For some reason, he wears like a padded collar that looks like a life jacket, yes. but it's not. <laughs> it's so confusing. But his figure was awesome because his figure was literally like shiny. Hmm. Uh, he was one of my favorites. I also, I liked Nemesis Enforcer, probably mm. because he left such an impression on me from this movie. Uh, those are probably my favorites. I liked the bad guys. And Cobra Commander, I never understood why. I always wondered who would win in a fight between Cobra Commander and Skeletor. <laughs> and I thought they would just trip over each other and then nothing would happen. <laughs> yeah, I always thought, not always, but I, I wonder if that's like kind of having a bad guy but not having him be too scary. Yeah, oh, I, I think so. Um, probably the funniest character, though, of the entire thing is Serpentor. Who is that? I don't remember. He's the, this I command. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's, he's supposed to be this, like, apex, like, oh, my goodness, the convoluted plots. The things they did to follow <laughs> the plots from the TV show, Serpentor, was this, like, genetically modified. They, like, went around the world and got Napoleon's DNA and Alexander the Great and all these, like, great leaders. <laughs> was that in the show? It was in the show, yeah. Okay. Was so, that in the movie? I don't remember that from no, the movie. Well, they mention it in the movie. It's okay. just a tiny line. Because you knew the nerds were going to be like, excuse me, he, he, the Baron was the guy who did the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, and it's true. They address that in the movie. They do not look, they do not shy away from the hard truths in this movie. Burgess Meredith, which plays Globulus, the guy who's like a snake guy with the weird eye. Is he the guy that was like all encased in this yes. bulb? He and then like, yes. he un, like 
unfurls from it. Okay. Correct. He's the big bad guy. He's the leader, the smarts, the brains of Cobra La. Yeah. And, uh, but he's like, oh, for some reason, Serpentor always loses as well. But he like has snakes around his neck that he can throw as bl- as like spears. Yeah, yeah. So for some reason that makes him a better leader. Don't know why. How does he get them back? He's giving me strong Anakin Skywalker vibes where you're like, he's <laughs> got this great promise, but nothing ever happens. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so Serpentor, they're like, oh, you're great. You're so great. And Globulus is like, I know it was my idea to do this. And Baron is like, excuse me, it was my idea. And he's like, but I sent a bug to go into your brain to give you the idea. And you had the idea. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The levels. I, I want to be in the writer's room when they were talking about that facet. Like, I feel like there was a serious conversation about. I'm sure. All right, guys, this movie's shaping up well. But. This is a huge plot point we need to address, and we are not leaving until we solve this one. <laughs> and they just lock the doors, bring in pizzas. And then they come up with a bug. Yeah. I thought that that was like because they wanted to have an evil scientist. For the uh, Baron, right? The Baron? Is he the evil scientist? He's just like the classic, like, you know, German, like Nazi scientist. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's got so, the monocle. He's got a, he's, he literally has a Kaiser Bill, which is World War I mustache. Uh, anyway. He's just classic, but he also, he's the scientist that defies odds. Like he's a brainy guy, right? He has no hair, a monocle and a giant mustache. And yet he's totally ripped and he wears like uh, just a vest, a leather vest, I think. Did you see where Cobra Lao lives? Like, yeah. Or where, like you need to be buff to live there. Well, the Baron was never there. Oh, really? he, He was in with Cobra. He had no idea. Well, Cobra he had to keep existed. up. That's all That's I'm saying. That's true. He needed to be ready. Yeah. He needed to be ready. <laughs> okay. So when you were a kid, yeah. what was your reaction to the to Duke I, almost dying? I'm, I had a memory that he died. Like There's it was, a reason for that, but go ahead. No, I know why the reason is. Okay. Because I, if I remember right, it's in The Boy Who Could Fly. There's, I'm what? going off script here. What? There's in the boy who, these are like some of the most formative memories for me when I was little seeing movies, right? Duke dying. I remember him dying. And then there's a movie, I'm pretty sure it was The Boy Who Could Fly. And uh, Fred Savage is in it as a brother. And in it, like his dad dies in the movie. His dad had died in the movie. Mm -hmm. And the way he was dealing with the trauma of his dad dying was he was taking his G.I. Joe's. And he literally buried one and had like a burial service oh my gosh. of that. I remember, I need to watch that movie again to see if this is real or if I dreamt that. I totally want to watch that movie again because so, I, it was also formative for me in a very different way. Yes. But okay. Duke. Duke. I thought he died. I was shocked he actually didn't die when we watched it this time. And I, I don't know. I probably cried when I was little. I don't Aww. remember. I don't remember though. I don't remember. Okay. So the reason you thought he died is because when they were making this movie at yeah. the very same time, they were writing and producing the Transformers, mm-hmm. the movie. Mm-hmm. And it had, they had agreed that mm-hmm. both movies, mm-hmm. the heroes would die. Mm-hmm. And they thought that um, this one, G.I. Joe would come out first uh-huh. and Transformers would come out the second yeah but with like production and stuff it ended up being different and the transformers came out first Mm -hmm. but both had been like written Mm -hmm. and like you know um, animated so that duke would die but when the transformers came out and optimus prime (sighs) may he rest in peace no i'm just like i've been trying so hard to have you not know anything about the transformers (laughs) movie i am so miffed right (laughs) now you're shaking your head i thought you were just like that's like the huge plot point in the transformers movie i think i that okay well that makes me feel a little better okay so you say that about everything (laughs) so but so optimus prime dies Mm -hmm. in the movie and there was a lot of like pushback and yeah people people, were really upset yeah yeah i'm still upset (laughs) i can see that they had to bring him back in the tv show yeah they found a way yes they found of course they did yeah a bug crawled into his no 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 this is robots so anyway (laughs) i'm not going there anyway so because that didn't go so well Mm -hmm. they changed it in this movie and so if you look at it Mm -hmm. um it it looks like he dies yeah and he's his last words are go joe i know it's (laughs) it's amazing but so they that was him dying but then they changed it to be a coma wow and well i mean he literally got a snake head plunged into his heart his beating heart. So yeah, I mean, yeah. How do you, you don't how do you recover from that? From that? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I don't. Yeah. 
Uh, best dying line ever, by the way. Go, Joe. Um, <laughs> I love the fact that G.I. Joe, no matter what they do, always have to say, go, Joe. They're like, hey, can you go grab me grab me a soda? Yes, I can. Go, Joe. And then they like walk across the room and get a soda. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. It, both the bad guys had yes. their own thing, too. Yes. Cobra, la, 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 yes. la, la. Yes. What would be your... Your war what cry. would be my war cry? Your battle cry. Am I in the universe of G.I. Joe or just in just life? Just in your life. In my life? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I kind of have one. I go <laughs> Pickle Rick. Uh, pickle Nick. I just shout <laughs> Pickle Nick every once in a while. <laughs> yes, you do. I went through a strong phase of doing that, and I stand by it. That it, It's very empowering. I enjoy that one. That's good. Pickle That's good. Nick. Yeah. You would just hear me in the, in the yard. You would just hear it shouted, Pickle Nick. <laughs> that would be mine. What about you? Um, I came up with this question and then I didn't have an answer. Like <laughs> I haven't thought about it, but um, uh, yeah, my own battle cry. Hmm. Well, while you think of that, yeah, I wonder if these organizations, these people are such specialized like groups. I wonder if they're like Monk. He's like a world class detective, but he has like severe OCD. So he has to like touch every meter, you know, mm-hmm. and these guys can function on such a high level as soldiers, but they have this like tick that they have to do all the time in order to do their super specialized stuff, which is shouting, go Joe <laughs> or Cobra, la, 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 la. Um, I want to come up with something cool, but I think one of the things I say the most is like, okie dokie artichoke. <laughs> okie dokie artichoke. That's true. That's fair. I, I think that might be my battle cry. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. Um, if you could be any character in this movie, who would you be? And you can mm. change, obviously you're a female. There's only three females in the movie. Who? You can change to any character. That's fine. I like the females the most. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Mm. Jinx is pretty funny. Wh- which she one was she? She was the ninja girl. Yeah. She actually had a, a pretty big role. She did. I was surprised at that. I was shocked she wasn't on the cover of the DVD. They got Lady Jane on there. I'm like, she was barely in the movie. She had like one line maybe. You know every name of every. I don't of know all of them. All of them. It's crazy. I know a lot of them. Well, but I'm glad you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I who do. are the other women? Uh, there's Lady Jane, the Baroness. Um, that was it. Oh, uh, Jinx, and then I can, the one who dressed up. I can't remember her name though. She was one of those the Swamp Thief people. They like they were really cool figures. Their skin changed color in the sun, like literally the figures. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, maybe her. She was cool. She was neat. But who was the the girl who like <laughs> in the beginning she kind of like sneaks in mm-hmm. to the Cobra headquarters? Not Cobra Law, but like headquarters and she she freaks everyone out. This is like after the Statue of Liberty sequence. Okay. She comes in and she can like go through stuff and she has this technology. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know her name. She's one of the Cobra Law she was a new character. Okay. There were like four or five primary new characters. She was one of them. And she got like, she got through all their defenses. Yes. And got to Cobra Commander. Yes. And the other guy. No, uh, yeah. She was going after Serpentor. Okay. And I think that was, uh, what was her name? So oh, I have it right here. It's um, oh, Xandar. No, not Xandar. Uh, Pythonia. Pythonia. Okay, yeah, she was my favorite. I'll be her. She had a really cool, like, huge ponytail off the top of her head. Yeah, she did. She could do, like, all the things, too. Without a doubt, I I would pick one of two characters in this movie, or I would play both. Okay, okay. All right? I want to do Roadblock, because he rhymes when he talks. (laughs) I forgot about that. He's like, that's a fact. Let's get this back. (laughs) Like, he just keeps rhyming (laughs) for all his stuff. I just love him. Uh, He also has a really big machine gun, the figure. Uh, and then uh, Cobra Commander. I mean, you got to go for the Oscar. And those two working together were amazing. Once a man. No time to delay. We got to play. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were strong Lord of the Ring vibes when those two got together. Like, you know, Gollum leading Frodo and Sam. Like, yeah. Yeah. It felt um, like an homage almost. It's amazing. I don't know. Like. Just the quirkiness of the characters is mm-hmm. really fun. Yeah. Like a character that rhymes, that everything he says rhymes. And then there's like the basketball guy. The basketball guy's hilarious too, where he <laughs> does the play-by-play calls of all of his stuff. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, 
The guy with the new guy, though, with the Hawaiian shirt, I don't remember his name because he was he didn't have much of a part after the movie. But like he like literally just picks up missiles and throws them like <laughs> that guy was crazy, too. Um, wow. So what, if any messages, Melissa, do you think we're in this film? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I am at a loss. Um, what? Fighting for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. <laughs> A real American hero, G.I. Joe is there. <laughs> that's that's what I think the message is. Okay, that's kind of cheating. And just... I've not been brainwashed either. Yeah, sure. Probably. You whisper that in your sleep. Did you know that? <laughs> Fighting for freedom wherever there's trouble. <laughs> You're just lucky I don't sing it in my sleep. <laughs> um, so I think the message I took away from this is like to like be playful. Because like... And it's not from the movie. It's uh-huh. it's from like thinking about the writers and all of the weirdness that we were just listing and the quirkiness and wonkiness. Like, okay. th- I like that. And like being creative <clears throat> is so fulfilling. And so it's kind of like a good reminder just to be creative. And, um, you know, it's okay to be a little weird if you're Serpentor <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> whatever he, he definitely lets his serpent flag fly <laughs> he he has a cape which i was always nervous every time he was on his hovercraft thing yeah i was afraid because his fans on the side i yes. was afraid he's gonna get sucked in for sure uh speaking of being creative i would be remiss if i did not mention the fact that uh i loved sergeant slaughter and i had the figure and he was the lead character in the film that i made as a child uh i don't even remember the name of it but i had like a two-part film and i did stop motion animation <laughs> with my gi joes and sergeant slaughter and his slaughter's marauders were like the stars of the movie it's pretty epic it, it probably won some awards i don't remember about but yeah yeah i'm sure yeah um i've enjoyed it the film the film yeah oh, i forgot i showed you <laughs> Um, how many G.I. Joe characters did you own? Uh, I mean, there's still the kids play with them. We still have them. I probably had at least 60, I'm oh guessing, goodness. at least. That's crazy. There were a lot. And they fought with the Star Wars characters very frequently. <laughs> and G.I. Joe always won because it had a clear advantage. What's the, what do you mean? Elbows and knees. <laughs> Star Wars didn't have those. <laughs> oh. They G- weren't bendable. G.I. Joe could bend at the elbows and the knees. Star Wars could not. They had straight arms, straight legs. <laughs> and, but G.I. Joe's weakness is uh, age. Like like many human beings, as they age, they decay. Mm-hmm. And they have rubber bands holding the top and the bottom together. Yeah. And once their rubber bands goes, psh, they're gone. Yeah. It's so, impossible to put it back in. Yeah. Star Wars, not a problem. They're just a single piece of plastic. They'll live forever. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably a lesson there, There's too. There's definitely a lesson there. <laughs> wow. Uh, any Anything else you want to mention about this one? Um, what? It's fun. Like, it's, it's a fun very one. Fun. I, I totally mentioned uh, to some, some people at work that I was watching this one, and I saw their faces light up remembering mm. that this movie existed. <laughs> so do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out. And... Uh, <laughs> probably the only place you can get it. There's a remastered DVD we got from the library. So support your local library. They probably have a copy of it. Yeah. And go, Joe. Go, Joe. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> hey, Bob, want to paint your name? Uh, no, thanks. What are you, a sissy? Prove you're not or we'll tell everybody. I just don't feel right about it. Right on. Flint! It's hard not to follow the crowd, but sometimes that path is just a dead end. I knew I was right. Yeah, I'm with you. Me too. Remember, listen to yourself. Because I know what's best for me. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Tell us what you think of this film in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.